All right, guys, welcome to part two of your final exam review. Here we're going to do numbers 11 through 20. Uh, how many quadrants are in the coordinate plane? Um, I hope all of you can see that there's four. Remember, this is quadrant one. Here's quadrant two. Uh, and notice we use Roman numerals when we label quadrants. Here's quadrant three, and here is quadrant four. All right, here we go. Let's move on. Uh, number 12, order the numbers from least to greatest. Well, taking a look at these, I see that there's two negatives. Here's a negative, and here's another negative. So I want to figure out which one of these comes first. Remember, when we're talking about negatives, the number farthest from zero is the smallest. It's opposite the positive numbers. Um, in positives, the bigger the number is, the further away to the right of zero it is. So for negatives, the larger the number looks, the further left of zero the number is. So if I take a look at negative 1 over 9, that number is very close to zero. How do I know that? Well, I would need 9 over 9 for this number to be worth negative 1. So since this number is very close to zero, I take a look at negative 8 over 5. This is an improper fraction. So I know that this number is going to be negative 1. From 5 to 8, how many are left over? I hope you've said 3. So when I take a look at these, this number on the number line, here's our 0. Negative 1 over 9 will be placed right over here on the number line. Or somewhere about there. Negative 1 and 3 eighths, well, it's not at negative 1. It's, um, it's even smaller, but it's not negative 2. So that number doesn't fall at the halfway mark because 4 out of 8 would be right in the middle. So 3 eighths would be somewhere right about here. Which one of those two numbers is furthest to the left? The negative 8 over 5 or the negative 1 over 9? And I hope you're all saying negative 8 over 5. And then we get negative 1 over 9. Now let's take a look at our positives. Um, in our positives, there are... Uh, three numbers, four sevens, one and seven tenths, and five tenths. Well, I know this number here is going to be the largest. How do I know? It's the only number bigger than one. So all I need to do now um, is figure out which number comes next, the five tenths or the four sevens. And the only way to figure that out is to divide 4 7 out and see what kind of decimal it produces. So let's divide 4 7 Okay, since 7 can't go into 4, I add a decimal to 0. How many 7s go into 40? How many sevens go into 50? Well, we could actually stop right here. That should be a decimal point. Um, so we have 0.56. If I add a zero, if I add another decimal place to the 0.5, the next place here would be a zero. It's like 50 cents. And this is like 56 cents. So I already have enough decimal places to determine which number is bigger. So what's bigger, 50 cents or, fi I'm sorry, which is smaller, 50 cents or 56 cents? And hopefully you're all saying 50. So 0.5 comes next. And finally, the 56 cents comes after the 50 cents. But remember, the number that originally was given wasn't 56 cents. It was. Um, the 4 over 7. So that's the number we need to write in our answer. So 
So in order, least to greatest, negative 8 fifths, negative 1 ninth, 5 tenths, 4 sevenths, and 1 and 7 tenths. For 13, if you notice, both of our signs are negative. So we want the solution is the number closest to 0. Okay? Um, as you, when you're negative, the uh, smaller the number gets, the closer to zero you're getting. So that would be the bigger number. So I have one decimal here and one fraction here. So you can go either way. You can make the decimal a fraction, or you can make the fraction the decimal. So for today, let's take 65 hundredths and make it a fraction. Now let's reduce. Um, 65 and 100 share a factor of 5. So I'm going to take 65 divided by 5 to get 13. And I'm going to take 100, divide that by 5 to get 20. So negative 4 and 65 hundredths is equivalent to negative 4 and 13 twentieths. So it's very obvious at this point what the solution is. Uh, since they're both negatives and they're both 13 20th, our answer is equal to. Uh, number 14, we're asked to subtract. So what we're going to do here is um, find a common denominator first. So a common denominator between 2 and 10 would be 10. Uh, think about counting by 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 is the first number that both 2 and 10 have in common. So let's begin. So the first fraction is already out of 10. We keep the 3. 2 times what is 10? Times 5. So 1 times 5. Five. Now what we need to do is take a look at the numerators. We're really just looking at 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5 equals negative 2. Remember, the 5 is negative because there's a minus in front of it. So we take 5, take 3 away, we get 2, keep the sign negative. And we can reduce this fraction. 2 and 10 share a factor of 2. So divide top and bottom, or numerator and denominator, by 2 to get negative 1 over 5. Okay, here again we need to subtract. Uh, if you notice, we have an integer here and a fraction here. The easiest way to negotiate this problem, again, this is just one way, is to put a 1 over the negative 9. So what would your common denominator be between 1 and 2? And hopefully you're all saying two. One times what is two? Hopefully you're saying two. So negative nine times two is negative 18. And since this is already the same denominator, we keep the 11. Now what we're essentially doing is taking a look and a common denominator of 2, and our numerators are negative 18 minus 11. And what happens here? Since the 18 is negative, minus 11, remember minus means to add, take opposite. Add, take opposite. The opposite of minus is plus, and what's the opposite of this positive 11? Hopefully, you're saying negative 11. Okay, so we get negative 29 over 2, and all we need to do is write this as a mixed number. How many 2s in 29? Hopefully, you're saying 14. Because negative 14 times 2 is 28. How many steps to 29? 1 out of 2. The solution is negative 14 and one half. 
Number 16, we need to subtract, so let's find a common denominator. Um, the common denominator between 11 and 3 is 33. Eleven times what is thirty-three times three? So eight times three is twenty-four. Three times what is thirty-three times eleven? So eleven times one is eleven. Again, I see a minus. So negative nine minus negative two. We're going to add these two and keep them negative. And here's why. Okay, remember, minus is the same thing as plus, and then take the opposite sign for this number. So I rewrote it as plus negative 2 and 11 over 33. So I'm going to take the two fractions and add them. 9 and 2 is negative 11. 24 plus 11 is uh, 25. I'm sorry, 35. So now we have um, an improper fraction here. So we need to take 35 over 33 and make it a mixed number. <laughs> 33 goes into 5, 35, one whole time. How many are left over? 2 out of 35. So what we're going to do now is take this one whole and add it on, remember this is all negative, so we're going to add this negative 1 to the negative 11 to get negative 12 and 2 over 35. For number 17, uh, it's very important that you recognize what it is you're adding and subtracting. 4 and 1 fifth minus negative. Okay, you should immediately write this as plus positive. Plus negative 4 and 1 fifth. You should see a relationship between those two numbers. The first one is positive 4 and a fifth. The second one, we're adding a negative 4 and a fifth. Those are called opposites. So they cancel one another out when we add them. Think about it. You have $4.20 in your pocket, and you have to pay me $4.20. How much money is left in your pocket? Well, at that point, nothing, because they cancel each other out. So what are we left with? Positive 19 over 6. Let's write this as a mixed number. How many sixes and 19? Three. How many left over? One and six. All right, we're going to stop here. Um, I know I want to go to 20, but I don't want to run out of time here on the clock. So uh, you'll see the next couple problems on the next video.